but my main concern here is finding a more appropriate way. Um, anybody who does take care of prairie dogs is supposed to try and relocate them first, and that's supposed to be the number one thing that they do first. And then there's other methods of doing it, but this rodinator, and I would encourage anybody to go online and look this up, is very, <clears throat> very, very disturbing. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also had issues um, when this happened in this particular field with prairie dogs that weren't killed uh, immediately and they were running across the field screaming and on fire and some of our children in the neighborhood did witness this and it was a very traumatic thing. Back here are our homes and we are a small community with South Orchard Creek and the North Creek right beyond that. We are just south of Celestial Seasonings and these are our houses. Right here is the fence. This is City of Boulder. This fence now divides us, puts us right into County of Boulder. So regulations are very, very different. And they basically don't care if you live in the city, if it's a county ordinance. <laughs> and we have the field out here, which is what we had been dealing with for a couple years. As you can see, there's a lot of, um, a lot of stuff growing now because the prairie dogs are gone. Um, then across J Road, which is right at J and Spine, is another agricultural area or zone, even though there's residents over there also. Um, that has been doing a lot of this prairie dog bombing with this rodinator and they will work out there anywhere from four to eight eight hours a day and this is typically done in March when um, when the prairie dogs are getting ready to have their babies or have just given birth to their babies you know I do they're very prolific so they're trying to to stop that and you know <laughs> lower the population and I know one of the people over here has horses and she's trying to protect her horses but I you know I just feel that we really need to look at other alternatives and be respectful of the people who live in close proximity to this type of, of um, activity. As far as the impact on the explosions it's unbelievable and unless you've been out here to experience it it's hard to comprehend that it could be this loud and that we could be this upset about it <clears throat> <laughs> Excuse me, but our windows rattle. It's unbelievable. You can't be in the house. You're literally shell-shocked after a while Because it's this constant thing and you know the next one's coming and you just kind of you just kind of shudder um, We've had people that have been from war zones Vietnam vets who cannot be in the house when this is going on and it's really invasive um, a lot of animals have been very, very affected by this. Animals have dug holes into the ground. They've run away. Um, in my particular case, one day they were in the house. I was not home. They chewed into the woodwork around some of the doors because they were so stressed out. Yesterday when this was going on, and granted, the one yesterday is across the street, so it's even further. <clears throat> It took me 20 minutes to get my one dog out from underneath the deck because she was so terrified and then both all my animals came in and were just shaking and it's you know it it's horrible to not be able to be in your own home and to have to be submitted to this type of noise.